Now that we've set the ground rules and the five main questions to consider, let's look at the various Medicare for All plans. At the time we taped this episode, mid-February 2019, there were 10 that we could get full answers for. How they break down is the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Let's start with universality. Four of the plans get us all the way there. The biggest and most well-known is Senator Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. His plan would take Medicare, make it better, and then give it to everyone. How better, you ask? It would now cover vision and dental, drugs, and even long-term care. It would even cover abortion. It would completely do away with employer-sponsored health insurance as well as the individual market. It would also do away with premiums, which, let's be clear, Medicare has right now. So this is Medicare Plus. It would even do away with cost-sharing for the most part. It would be paid for through taxes, likely, and some fees on large banks. The House Medicare for All bill, put forward by Representative Jayapal in the House Progressive Caucus, is very similar. It, too, would be universal by simply expanding Medicare to everyone. Abolish employer-sponsored insurance in the individual market. No premiums. No cost-sharing. Not as clear as how it will be paid for, though likely through taxes. It's expected that the House will align their bill more closely with the Senate bill in the near future. There are two more plans that fight for universality, but with more retention of the current system. The first is the Center for American Progress's Medicare Extra for All. It would enroll all newborns and people turning 65 into Medicare Extra. Therefore, as time went on, everyone would have Medicare Extra. But for now, private insurance would remain intact. In addition, everyone who currently doesn't have insurance would also be enrolled in Medicare Extra. Premiums would be taken out of taxes unless you don't pay taxes, and then you don't have to pay premiums. Of course, for everyone with private insurance, you'd still have premiums and cost sharing. It would entice employers to stop offering coverage, though, by telling them that if they do, they could instead just pay a payroll tax and let Medicare Extra take care of it. That would only happen, though, if the coverage seemed better than private coverage, and that's not clear. But over time, everyone would have Medicare Extra, and it's likely that we'd wind up with Medicare for All. The Medicare for America Act is somewhat similar. It's proposed by Representatives DeLauro and Schakowsky. It would establish a Medicare for America program that would immediately enroll those who currently get Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP, insurance on the individual market, and the uninsured. Employers can keep offering private coverage, though, if it's great coverage. Medicare Advantage plans might stick around, so individual private coverage isn't totally gone, and some choice could remain. It'd be paid for with premiums rated by income. Cost sharing would also remain, but it would be eliminated for preventive services and placed on a sliding scale based on income. Unlike Medicare Extra for All, it's possible that employer-based health insurance might stick around forever. The remaining six plans sacrifice universality for more choice. They're more opt-in than opt-out. They all preserve the employer-based insurance market and the individual market. They all charge premiums in some ways, and they all involve some form of cost sharing but they still reshape the system in ways that involve expansions of government-sponsored health insurance. Some are through buy-ins. The idea here is that Americans, if they want to, can buy public insurance plans through Medicare. This mostly applies to people who are on the individual market, but there's variation. Let's dig in. Senators Merkley and Murphy have proposed the Choose Medicare Act. Their plan would allow anyone on the individual market to choose and purchase a Medicare Part E plan. That's what they're calling it. It would work like traditional Medicare. Like other Medicare for All plans, it would also improve Medicare by setting out-of-pocket maximums, which don't exist now. It would also increase tax credits to help people buy the plans and allow Medicare to negotiate drug prices. But it would leave the question as to whether employers let employees go to Medicare up to employers. If companies want to stay on their own, they can. And premiums and cost sharing would continue. Representative Schakowsky and Senator Whitehouse have the Choice Act. It's not too dissimilar to the Choose Medicare Act, except it would only allow small employers to opt into Medicare with those in the individual market. Larger companies would not be allowed to participate. Representative Higgins and Senators Kane and Bennett have Medicare X, which is not an implementation of Weapon X. It's similar to the Choice Act in that large companies are locked out and small employers can opt in. But there's one more exception. Medicare X would only be available to those in the individual market who only have one insurer in their area. This is meant to spur competition. It would also be available if costs were really high in one market. But if there are already options with an S in your area, no Medicare X. Medicare isn't the only program we could offer for sale, though. There's also Medicaid. 
Representative Lujan and Senator Schatz have offered the State Public Option Act. This plan would essentially let anyone who wanted to buy into their state's Medicaid program. Premiums would stay. Cost sharing potentially could, depending on how states design their plans. Being an opt-in plan, it also wouldn't call for an end of either the employer-based or individual markets. There are two other plans worth mentioning. They also attack the problem in different ways and also don't seek universality. The first, the Healthy America Plan, created by employees of the Urban Institute, creates a new plan for those currently covered by Medicaid, by CHIP, by individual plans, and the uninsured. It essentially just merges all of them together in one plan while not touching anything else, including the employer-based market or Medicare itself. The second is Senator Stabenow's Medicare at 50 Act. It allows anyone between the ages of 50 and 64 to choose to buy Medicare plans if they want. If they'd otherwise get insurance through their job, their employer would pay their premiums on their behalf. This Medicare, though, would be Medicare as it exists now, with limits and cost sharing. So many who get their job-based coverage would not find it as enticing as they might other proposals that improve Medicare before expanding it. And those are the major plans at the moment. Some are really Medicare for all ending private insurance, and expanding the enhanced public program across the board. Some seem to expand enhanced Medicare to those already on public programs or those who are uninsured at this time. Others look to keep more of the current system intact and allow people the option to buy Medicare or Medicaid if they like. Others seek to try and reduce the number of uninsured with as little mucking with the current system as possible. These clearly have pros and cons. They will cost different amounts. They will require or not require new taxes, and they will disrupt the system we have now to varying degrees. But they constitute a range of options by which we can use the public insurance programs we have to further reform the insurance market. There's a breadth of ideas up for debate, and that debate is likely to intensify in the future. Hey, do you like the show? It really helps if you like the video and really if you subscribe right down there. And another good way to support the show is at patreon.com. Go to patreon.com slash healthcare triage. We'd especially like to thank our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. And if you love healthcare triage content, get even more at the Healthcare Triage Podcast. It's great. Get it at iTunes or Spotify or wherever you download your podcast content.